Hey, this is Ben Hale with Easy Living Yards, and today I want to show you how to make a self-watering planter. These are awesome ways to reduce maintenance in your garden or in your landscape, both from a functional standpoint and a decorative standpoint. So as you can see here, I have two self-watering planters I've made. This one is growing some rosemary right now, and basically how these work is they have a reservoir of water in the bottom, and then the top you have your potting soil and your plant, of course, and you have this pipe that goes down to fill the reservoir down the bottom. Now there's a couple of very important tricks which I'll explain later uh, to show you how these things work because you can't just have a pot with water in the bottom. That will kill your plant. Of course you can make these out of something really cheap, really inexpensively. These things are super fast to, con to construct. So here's one made out of a five gallon bucket and some spare parts I had laying around. This is a little bit nicer one I've made. This is still really inexpensive. It's a composite container. The key here is if you do a nicer one like this, you need to make sure it's a single wall container. That's something you can drill through. That's really important. And of course the bottom as well has to be sealed so there can't be a, a drain hole in the bottom. Um, so if you find one of these containers, you can make them look really beautiful and plant something really pretty in them uh, to go on your front porch or in your patio. And of course, these guys, they're not quite as pretty, but they're incredibly functional. They work super great. They save you tons of work if you're trying to grow a potted garden or uh, you, know, you don't care as much about having something prettier, but you wanna have some beautiful plants in your landscape. These work great. So I'm gonna show you how to make these. So we're jumping inside here real quick, just so I can show you how this thing actually works so you can understand what's going on. And then also if you end up, end up making any modifications, uh, you can do so in a way that still works. All right, so basically what we've got here is our bucket, right? And, and you can see this little tiny thing on the side here, that's an overflow hole. We're gonna be putting an overflow hole in there. And that's really important. So your bucket just basically doesn't fill up to the top as you're filling it and uh, it ends up drowning in the roots of your plants. You got to make sure your plants have moisture, but they don't get waterlogged uh, because the roots actually need air and oxygen to work properly as well. So that's the really key factor here is why self-watering planters are so helpful. They allow air space in the soil mix as well as good moisture. And that's really important. So let's go into just how this thing's going to be built. So we've got our bucket, that little overflow hole, we're gonna have a couple spacers in there. What I'm using is some leftover sour cream containers. Um, whatever you use here, you just gotta make sure there's some sort of structure to, um, to stand up and to hold up the next piece that I'm gonna show you. And this is gonna help determine your water level of your reservoir. So you want a couple inches height there, um, but you don't wanna go overboard. Uh, you just want enough that you can hold a good reservoir of water in the bottom of your pot. And of course, these need to be permeable as well so they can fill inside with water. And you'll show that as I construct this thing as well. All right, so once we've got our spacers in there, the next piece is, is a contraption that I'm calling the separator. So what this is, is, is a plastic disc that sits flat right on top of those, those spacers. You can see how they sit there. And then there's this tube, it's our filling tube that fills the water of the reservoir. The really key piece here, you can see that this is an angled cut at the bottom. That's really important as well. So it's not sitting flat on the bottom and you don't actually fill your container. So you gotta sit it angled. So as you're filling this with water, the water can go into this, this space below. Another key feature here too, you can see now, these spacers are sitting just a little bit taller than your overflow hole. So that way this, this separator piece, this flat plastic piece, which is in, in the video is made from our bucket lid, um, is a little bit taller. This provides an air gap. So let me put the water in now. All right, so you can see where the water is. It overflows right at that water hole, right? Right at that hole we've drilled into the bucket. You have an air space. This allows what's called root pruning or air pruning for roots. Um, so as the roots grow down in this bucket, if they get past the, the wicking membrane, which I haven't put in here yet, if they get past that, they'll stop growing at this air gap because air or <laughs> plants don't like to grow where there's air basically with their roots uh, for the most part, of course, any plant that we're gonna put in here. And so this water, it won't uh, be getting up into the roots and causing root rot and, and disease issues and that sort of thing. All right, so we've got our water, uh, we've got our uh, spacers to hold up the separator piece. We've got our fill tube. The next thing we've got is a wicking membrane. So this, I'm using a plain old t-shirt in the video. And here, so it's this gray material now that I've put in here. You can see that a part of it 
goes down into the water. So basically we pull, let me go back a little bit, our separator that we put in there, you can see there's a hole right in the center of it. We take the water out too, so this is easier to see. And I'll take those spacers out too. All right, so what we've got is our bucket with our separator piece, okay? It's right now it's floating in the air, but it's gonna be sitting on top of those spacers. It's got a hole in the center, that's going to allow our wicking material to be pulled down toward the water layer. And then it's got a hole to fit the pipe in that's used to fill the reservoir. Okay, so you can see that pretty easily there. All right, so let's put back in our water. Let's put back in our spacers. So this shows the full construction now. And then we're going to put back in our wicking membrane. All right, so the wicking membrane, you can see it goes all the way around the edges of the pot. And it's going to go just a little bit below the edge of the separator too. It's gonna to fold around the edges if we can do it. It's Sometimes it's a tight fit, but you wanna get it as tight as possible. This prevents the soil from percolating down into your water reservoir and clogging things up. And it keeps the nutrition up in the, in the space that the plants can access. Um, and then it's really important that you get a piece to go way down in that reservoir, you know, as far as you can, uh, so that it can wick uh, the water up to the upper membrane. It's really important that this wicking material is made of uh, cotton or some sort of natural fiber. So just a regular cotton t-shirt works great. Just an old t-shirt uh, that you don't use anymore. Um, and uh, it, it works better than the plastic, you know, polyester or something to wick material. Up. So the last thing, of course, is going to be our soil mix. And, and the important thing here is to use a potting soil mix. Uh, it allows proper wicking action um, through, the, through the soil profile. So what we're going to have now is we've got this water reservoir, we've got an air gap, and then a thing that separates the water uh, or the, the, the potting soil from the water area so it doesn't get soggy in water, and it also separates the roots from being able to grow down. Then we've got our wicking material that pulls the water up, and as it soaks up into the rest of the t-shirt, it's actually going to, the, the potting soil is going to use capillary action to pull the water all the way up through the soil profile. So you can quickly check just by poking your finger in the top of the soil uh, a couple inches down to see if it's still moist enough. So that's basically it for how this thing is constructed. All right, let's jump over to uh, what materials we actually need here. Let me get this video out of the way. There we go. All right, so what we're gonna need for materials, uh, we talked about these already, but the most important thing is a bucket or a single wall planter that you purchase. Um, if you're going not for looks, five gallon buckets work great. Um, try and get one with the lid as well. It makes life a lot easier. Um, or you need a piece of plastic that you can cut into a circle that fits down into the, the bottom of your container or your planter. All right, you need a piece of PVC pipe. I went with a one inch piece of pipe here. Um, just whatever outside diameter of that pipe, you need a drill bit that fits it as well. You need an old t-shirt that will uh, be used as your wicking material. You need some old containers. These can be old planting cups, um, uh, yogurt cups, uh, sour cream containers as I used here, something like that. Of course, you need a plant. And the things I forgot to show here are you need some soil mix and some water, of course. All right, the, the uh, tools you'll need is um, your drill bits. So for the side hole and then the holes in the little... Um, containers to make sure they don't uh, have a giant bubble of air in them. Uh, you need about a quarter inch uh, drill bit. I went with a 5 16 inch here. Whatever you have laying around that's about the size of your pinky finger will work. Um, you don't want too big just because then you get critters inside your container. Um, you don't want too little uh, because then your water can't properly uh, fill through your cups, uh, your separator or your spacer cups there, and then also um, uh, your overflow hole. It needs to be able to drain out quickly and easily. All right. And then you need an inch and a quarter drill bit or whatever size is the outside diameter of your, um, your pipe you're using to fill. And you also, it's going to be the same drill bit that's used to drill your center hole to pull your wicking material down into the water reservoir. I also had a, a, a rasp. This one's actually, I didn't have a rasp laying around, so I used a metal file very gently, but, um, uh, uh, you want a rasp to kind of clean off the plastic burrs that end up going everywhere. You don't really need this, but it's a nice to have. Uh, you need something to cut your pipe. Uh, so one side of the, your pipe is going to be a 90 degree cut and the other is going to be an angled cut as we talked about. You need a jigsaw or some sort of saw that can cut your circular 
separator that goes down into your planter. And of course you need your safety materials, your gloves and your safety glasses. You need a marker. I have a marking crayon here that didn't work in the picture. So you need a, like a Sharpie marker or something. And of course a drill to use your drill bits. All right, guys, let's jump into actually building this thing now. Okay, so I'm just going to jump over now to a quick fast forwarded uh, view of the build. So let's get started. All right, so first thing I'm doing is I'm taking those spacer cups that are going to determine the height of our reservoir, and I'm marking about an inch below them. That's going to be our overflow hole for the water reservoir so that you don't fill your water reservoir too full. Of course, don't forget your safety equipment. Now I'm using a 5 16 inch drill bit to make that hole. You just want something about pinky size. It doesn't have to be 5 16 uh, It's the size I chose. All right, so again, I double check that height to make sure it's uh, the, the cups will sit higher than that hole. That's really important. You can use, uh, here I'm using some old sour cream cups. You can also, you can see off to the side, I have some, uh, some planter cups as well as some old yogurt cups. Whatever you have laying around, just make sure it has some holes in it so that the water can percolate through the inside of those cups as well uh, so that they can uh, be part of the water reservoir and they don't just, you know, want to float up or whatever. Cleaning off some of the plastic shards there and just showing you how they'll sit inside that bucket. All right, let's take them out. Now we're going to get that lid ready. That lid is going to become the separator, so we're going to cut out the middle piece of that lid. First, I'm going to drill two holes, one in the center for the wicking uh, mem membrane, which is going to be a T-shirt, and then a hole off to the side for our filling tube. And so that's that filling tube. I have a pre-built pre or pre-cut piece uh, with that bucket in the background there, so you can kind of see. All right, so there's those two holes. Now we also need to cut out that insert piece for the separator uh, that's gonna sit on top of our little cup spacers. And uh, so to do that, I'm gonna take a jigsaw or whatever kind of saw you have. You don't have to use a jigsaw. Pre-drill a small hole, which I forgot to do there, as you can see. Um, uh, and you wanna cut just a little bit inside that rim. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be a little bit inside the rim so this piece will fit down inside the bucket with just a little bit of room, wiggle room to spare. Try not to cut through your tube filling hole as, as well there that I just passed. And now I'm going to take the rasp and just clean up that the burrs and stuff a little bit just to, you know, just to kind of clean up the work so you don't have plastic bits flying everywhere um, inside your your system. It's just kind of nice to get that stuff out of there. Okay, so that rim, once we're done, we can also put on top of the bucket just to add some rigidity. Now you can see this is just a piece of PVC I had laying around. I think it's some PVC conduit. And uh, you can use, I have some PVC cutters. You don't have to get fancy here though. Just get, you know, a, you can see this pool saw I have off to the, the right here as well. Uh, that works just fine. Just something to cut your, your pipe. And I think I have one inch conduit, so it ends up being about one inch and a quarter on the outside diameter. Whatever the outside, outside diameter of your tube is, just make sure you cut the hole appropriately. Now I just showed you kind of what the internal mechanism is going to look like. We saw a good view of that as well in our little demo before this. Now I'm pulling the wicking material through. It's just a cotton t-shirt. Make sure it has a good amount of cotton or it's 100% cotton ideally. And you want to make sure all the edges of the, sh as the, edges of the shirt still overlap around the the size of your separator and you want to pull that piece down a couple inches at least so it reaches down as far as possible into your water and here i'm cutting a small hole through the shirt where the the water filling tube will go through and put the angled cut down through and your shirt is going to fit on top of your your wicking material so you have a small piece going down into the water reservoir of your wicking material the rest sits on top to help wick that water up into your planting mix and so now I put all the cups in, you put the separator in with the wicking material t-shirt and your filler tube, and now you're basically set. So I'm going to fill with some potting mix. What I'm using here is Organic Mechanics Container Potting Blend. Uh, it's a wonderful mix. I really like Organic Mechanics. I'm not sponsored by them. Maybe I should be. Um, but yeah, they make some good stuff. If you want to make your own, you can do a nice sustainable mix using uh, a third compost one third uh, coconut coir and one third rice hulls. It'll do pretty good. And here again, I'm putting that rim on just to add some rigidity to the bucket. Um, and then I'm going to put my plant in. 
So the plant I'm planting here is a, just some pre-started organic spinach. I got the, both the planting mix and the spinach from Whole Foods. Uh, they have a nice supply each year of of plants and soil mixes as well that are nice sustainable mixes organic plants if you were, if you're eating greens and stuff you know you kind of want to eat organic stuff and of course you want to water it so i'm using some of my rainwater that we collect on our landscape it's great stuff you can use a hose or whatever i gently water the top because you want that you want that potting mix to get wet and moistened or else it doesn't wick very well and then of course filling up that reservoir through the tube and that's what the tube's there for Keep an eye on that bucket just down to the lower right of that warning label you can see on the bucket there. You can see I emptied this whole this whole uh, filling pot, and I'm adding more. So keep an eye on see when it starts to overflow, you know your reservoir is full. And you can use a funnel. It's usually a good idea. There you go. You can use a hose as well. So you can see it overflowing. So that means our reservoir is full, and we're basically done. And that's really it, guys. Okay, don't forget to clean up your mess. Uh, plastic, you know, we have a major issue now with plastics getting into our waterways, into our oceans. It kind of seems pretty far away, but your plastic floats really well. It gets into in animals and all sorts of creatures, and it causes a lot of problems. You guys can see I love self-watering planters. They're awesome. They're easy to make. Make sure you build some yourselves. Guys, that's pretty much it for how to create a self-watering planter. I am super psyched to share this with you because this is a huge time saver. It helps save plants. Look, nobody's cursed with this thing of, you know, I just have no luck with plants or whatever. And nobody's blessed with just this innate ability to take care of plants. It takes work. It takes time. It takes failure to get there. But self-watering planters are a huge way to do it. Also, if you guys have no idea how to plant a plant so it won't die, I created an awesome resource just for you. It's called how to plant a plant so it won't die. This is a free resource. Go on, check that link in the in right there and you can see it. Um, it's an awesome resource. Goes through the basics of what to do and what not to do to take care of pretty much any plant that you wanna plant. So check it out. Also, I'm always available for questions. All you have to do is go over to easylivingyards.com slash ask and go ahead and ask me a question. I'll get back with you. I'd love to help you with your problems in your landscape. Let's all work to make this world a more beautiful place, a more beautiful habitat for the world around us, the creatures that live around us. And let's, let's go out and make a positive difference. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you live with passion and make tomorrow better than today.